Okay, we have a week 15. And there's a picture of my cat that I drew. So today, since there's no students, I'm just going to run through this and you all have the recording for reference in the future if anyone wants to look at it. So I'm just going to go through a couple of examples. Um, topics including uh, vectors. Um, we got the dot product. We got the cross product. Right, note, note the word product. This is just sort of a, a vector multiplication. But we'll go. Um, and uh, so, you know, some uh, vectors like magnitude of a vector, magnitude. Um, started. So I actually want to start with a uh, kind of like an algebra exercise that is, um, I'm getting this out of uh, page 790, 117, uh, or the problem number 17. Uh, this is Stewart's calculus book, seventh edition. And the instructions for the problem show equation represents a sphere. Find the center and origin. Or radius. Find the center and radius of the sphere. And they give us a, an equation. They give us uh, 2x squared plus, plus 2z squared is equal to 8x minus 24 plus 1. Now, uh, we can kind of tell it's a, a sphere just based on the fact that we all have 2s next to the variable squared. Now these just mean we're going to have to complete the square to find um, where it's centered at. Um, so let's recall the standard form, standard, uh, standard form of a sphere is h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared is equal to r squared, where h, k, l is the center and r is the radius. So this is the goal. This is what we want to mimic with our given equation. We want this to match up to here. And we're going to have to complete the square. So it's just a little bit of algebra, stuff from maybe college algebra if you took that class, or high school algebra. So um, let's group all the x's, all the y's, and all the z's together. So we have 2x squared minus 8x plus 2y squared, that's the only y, plus 2z squared plus 24z. is equal to, now to complete the square, this coefficient must be, the coefficient attached to the x squared must be one. So we have to factor out a two. So we have two x squared minus four x. We're gonna add something to complete the square. Factor out a two because this coefficient. So we have z squared plus 12z plus blank from completing the square 
equals one plus blank plus blank to offset what we add right here and here. We have to add it to the other side so we don't um, change our equation. Okay, so the formula to determine what goes right here, does anybody know? Empty crowd, so it's uh, B over two squared, where B is the single power of the variable. So we got negative squared, that's uh, negative two squared is equal to four. Let's do that in red, because it's special. Plus four, plus four. Okay, now for the Z, we have the same uh, same formula, we got B over two squared. That's uh, over two squared, which is six squared is 36. Um, and now we can factor into the um, a binomial squared. That's right. Yeah, because we have two times four should actually be eight. Right. For, well, we're multiplying two by this whole quantity, so I have to add um, a different number. So 36 times 36 times two is uh, 72. Thank you, Les. Now we got um, x, and then whatever you know, whatever goes right here is always the b over two part that we have from this step. So it's always going to be a minus two, and you can check your work. You can do you know x minus two squared x minus two, so that's what x squared minus two x minus two x is a minus four x plus four. Boom, we have what we originally started with right there, and then uh, we have plus two y squared plus two times z plus six, and again, you could square it if you want to check to see if it's the same, but it is. Uh, and this is equal to, let's see, 72 plus eight is 80 plus one, 81. Okay, this is almost the standard form of the sphere, but we have these constants being multiplied, so we have to divide by two. Cancel, 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 81 over 2. So we have x minus 2 squared plus y squared plus z plus 6 squared is equal to 81 over 2. So now it's in standard form. All we have to do is state the center and the radius. The center, well, notice that it's minus h turns into a plus h minus k is plus k minus l is plus l so you just flip the sign of whatever you have in the parentheses so this is going to be two now y squared is the same thing as y minus zero squared so we have two zero negative six for the radius or for the center and the radius is the square root of what's on the right hand side. So this is 9 square root of 2 over 2. If you choose to rationalize the denominator, maybe I should show that. So if you take the square root of 81 over 2, square root of 81 is 9 over root 2. So we have Apply by root two over root two equals two square root of nine over square root of two times square root of two 
pencil. We get two. All right. Thanks, man. Um, it's not erasing. Okay, and we got uh, some more examples, some more problems, some more problems to do. Uh, let's look at uh, some vector problems now. The instructions for this one. Um, well, first, let me let's talk about adding vector geometrically. Um, so there's there's two ways to add vectors geometrically that I know of, that I'm going to talk about. Right, if we have a vector and another vector, we can call this A and B. We can either do um, the triangle law, I don't know, I don't, Triangle law or uh, parallelogram law, um, and for the for the triangle, for triangle we have uh, we do tip to tail. So I'm going to keep a hmm. keep a. And then I'm going to shift the tail of B to be at the tip of A. So this is A and B. Then A plus B, the vector A plus B, would be if you were to So this is A plus B. Um, now the parallelogram law or rule, it's, I like it better because, you know, you could have potentially some error when you shift and you complete the uh, triangle improperly, but with the parallelogram law, we keep the vectors that would be in this position and you make a parallelogram. So a side, you know, equal length, equal angle to this vector A. And then we do the same thing with vector B. You know, just uh, make a parallelogram out of these two vectors. And from this point down here, up here, that would be A plus B, if we were to use a parallelogram law. It's the same as a triangle, which is two ways to add vectors geometrically. Um, we can also subtract vectors. We can, uh, you know, subtracting a vector is adding the negative scaling of the vector. So we have scaling a vector. Um, multiplying a constant, C, in the real numbers, right? The real number is just the number line. We have a single number versus a vector, which would be like, you know, potentially, you know, a lot of components. And in this class we're going to deal with you know two and three let me pause real uh, real quick to uh, plug in my laptop
All right. <clears throat> so we can scale a vector, uh, some constant times vector. In the book, it would be face A, but I just put a little arrow to denote it's a vector. C is a real number, so we keep it like a regular uh, font. Uh, so what does this do? If we have vector A looking like this, then the scaling C times A would just be stretching it. That's it. This makes it longer or shorter or changes directions. So you see vector A looking something like this. Then negative A would be the same length. Just the negative direction. Anti-parallel vectors. Cool. Um, and so if we want to add or if we want to subtract vectors, we add the negative scaling. So A minus B. Uh, using the example we had above, something similar to that, we just redraw it. We have A and B, and if we want to do A minus B, um, well, negative B would look like that. And then um, you can either do, you know, triangle or parallelogram. So I'm going to do triangle so if we have a and then negative B then a plus negative B is equal to a minus B the vector we want that's what it would look like All right. Um, now um, let's talk about the magnitude of a vector. So if we um, Because what is a vector? A vector has magnitude or size and so the magnitude, size, or length, and yeah, the direction is just where it points. Um, so suppose we have vector A equal to um, 8i minus j hat plus 4k hat. Now, what are these hats? What are these i, j, k? Well, I'm glad you asked. Vector i is an R3 in three dimensions, 1, 0, 0. Vector j, 0, 1, 0. And vector k is equal to 0, 0, 1. So if we do 8 times i, well, that's just 8 times the scaling, right? This is the, the 8 is just the scaling of the vector i. So it would no longer be 1, 0, 0. It would be 8, 0, 0. And then this negative j, well, we just multiply a negative 1 through j, and we get plus 0, negative 1, 0. And then we get plus 4k, 0, 0. And so the resulting vector, if you want to use angle brackets, um, 8, negative 1, 4. That's equal to 8i minus j plus 4k. Now, 
you don't have to do this step. I'm just showing you. Um, and so if we want to find the magnitude of this vector, recall that the magnitude of a vector a in, we can say it's even in n dimensions, a1, a2 to a n. The magnitude sometimes written like this, sometimes written like this. Absolute value, you can look at that, as, you can look at it as a, a distance from zero. It is uh, exactly the square root of the component squared. So the magnitude of A, in our case, we have 8, negative 1, and 4. The square root of the component squared, 64 plus 1 plus 16. Now 64 plus 16 is 8. 8 80 plus 1 is the square root of 81. We get 9. Um, and if we want to find the magnitude, let's do another example. If we have a uh, vector v equals negative 4 to 4, um, the magnitude of v square root 16 plus 4 plus 16. That's 32 plus 4 is 36 equals 6. And uh, I think we have a customer finally. Hello, student. Yay. So, well, I've been going. I've been working um, a few problems, few examples. Uh, it's being recorded, so it'll the you'll see the everything before this point on the recording. So I'm just gonna uh, commence if that's all right. Um, we were talking about magnitude of a vector, and please feel free to ask questions. Um, the magnitude of a vector, if we're given, you know, numerical components, is the square root of each component squared. So, for instance, if we have, you know, vector a is equal to 1, 1, 1. This is a vector in three dimensions. You could all also write this as i hat plus j hat plus k hat. The magnitude of A would be the square root of each component squared. 1 squared is 1 all across the board. So we get the square root of 3 is the magnitude of this vector. Now, there's some special vectors. Oh, well, a vector with a special magnitude. Uh, and we call a vector with magnitude 1. on e-learning. A, a vector with magnitude 1 is called a unit vector. In maths, unit means like one, like the unit circle is a circle with radius 1. We could have a unit sphere, a unit ball, yeah, a unit vector, a vector with magnitude one. So we could have a problem that says something like find find a unit vector in the same direction as the given 
weg. Okay. We have um, vector v equals, use the same exact one, minus j plus 4k. Because we calculated the magnitude of v up here, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. So the magnitude of v, recall, the magnitude is the square, uh, the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. The square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So we got 8, negative 1, and 4. We got 8 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 4 squared. Square root of 64 plus 1 plus 16. Square root of 81 is equal to 9. Now, why did I, why did I take the magnitude? Well, I'll tell you. Because to find a unit vector in the same direction as a given vector, yeah, you can divide the vector, you can, you can scale the vector by 1 over the magnitude. Uh, time, times the vector, obviously, will give you this yields a unit vector, always. Right? If, if, if we take our vector, find the magnitude of it, divide by the magnitude, then we get uh, a unit vector. So 1 over the magnitude would be 1 over 9 times the vector, 8, negative 1, 4. So this is equal to 8 over 9, negative 1 over 9, 4, 9. Now, how would we confirm that this is in fact a unit vector? Any ideas? How do we know that this is a unit vector? Find the magnitude and test if it equals 1. OK. So let's call this vector u. So let's find the magnitude of u. This is equal to the square root of the squares of the sum of the, the, sum of the squares of the components. So we have 8 over 9 squared plus 1 over 9 squared plus 4 over 9 squared. Well, I know 8 squared is 64 plus 1 plus 16. We have a common, you know, 9 on the bottom. 9 squared is 81. And we're taking the square root of this. So what is 16 plus 64? We've done this already. That's a 0, 1, 8 plus another one right here would be 81 over 81, the square root of this. Well, this is just the square root of one, which is exactly one. Therefore, the unit vector is correct. We can do this with two dimensional vectors too. Uh, if we have, I'm just going to make one up, vector v is equal to, uh, let's say, 8i minus 3j. To find the unit vector, the direction of v, in, this, in the same direction, find we take the magnitude of v. to be the square root of 64 plus 9 is the square root of 73. And the unit vector, the little formula we can memorize, unit vector u is equal to 
V over the magnitude of V. So we have V over the magnitude of V. And so writing this with angled brackets, because I like those better, we have 8 over the square root of 73 and then negative 3 over the square root of 73. See, it works with vectors in R2, right? That's the xy plane. Um, all right. Now, why why do I want to know this? Why does why does anyone want to know this? Well, uh, at least you know, in this class, we're later on we're gonna uh, discover the notion of a directional derivative, um, and unit vectors um, are an integral part of that. So we're gonna need to know this unit vector idea when we get to uh, directional derivatives. OK. Um, let's talk about the dot product. The dot product. Does anybody know it? What is the dot product? If we have vector u dot, oh man, it keeps on doing that, dot vector v, this is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine theta. Um, sometimes people call the scalar product. Why would they call it the scalar product? Why would they call it that? Why would they call it scalar? What does that even mean? Well, if we look at this expression right here, um, so the on the right hand side or on the left hand side this equals the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine theta well what i know about the magnitude is that it is um a number right scalar just means a number a single number so the output of the dot product the dot product gives us a single number as opposed to the vector product, which would be the cross product that gives us a vector as the output. So this is scalar vector, or this is is uh, something that just mathematically works when they multiply. I didn't get to read all of that. Um, Um, what, what do you mean exactly? What do, what, can you rephrase that qu question perhaps? That should answer the question. Thank you, Elliot. Yeah, so... Yes. Yes, it's it's a it's a new thing, right? Because what is this cosine theta? Right? This is this is the angle cosine where theta is the angle between the two vectors. Yeah, so we're really introducing a new operation.
Um, so, um, there, there's a couple ways you can do the dot product. If you have two vectors, let's say u and v, and suppose we have the angle theta between them, and say this is like 30 degrees. And let's say we have we know the magnitude of u to be like you know four, and the magnitude of v to be like three. Then we can calculate the dot product using this. We would just say u dot v is equal to the magnitude of u, which was 4, times the magnitude of v, which was 3, times cosine of uh, 30 degrees. And 30 degrees is actually pi over 6 radians. So this would give us. 12 times, and what is cosine of uh, pi over 6? Do we know this one? Nope. Okay, it is, uh, we'll look at it in the unit circle. 30 degrees. I see that x is bigger. The x is bigger over here. And so we actually get, um, no, square root of 2 over 2 is the 45 degrees. Yeah, so it's actually square root of uh, 3 over 2. Yeah, that's okay. So we would get, uh, this cancels to be 6. We get 6 square root of 3. Notice a single number a scalar, if you will. Um, now, um, it's component-wise multiplication. So if we have like two vectors, a equals i plus 2j minus 2k, and b equals 4i minus 3k, Right, this is just the vector 1, 2, negative 2, and then this is the vector for 0, because we don't have any j component right here, and then k is negative 3. If we want the dot product, if we want a dot b, we can um, multiply component-wise and add. We could do 1 times 4 plus 2 times 0 plus negative 2 times negative 3. So we would get 4, 0, we get 4 plus 0 plus 6 is equal to 10. So we just calculated the scalar product, Oop, 10. This, we just calculated the dot product for these two vectors. That's all it is. And now, um, let's try another example of that. So if we have um, u is equal to 8i minus j plus 4k, and v is equal to um, 6i um, plus... 2j uh, minus 3k product u dot v. Uh, remember, we just multiply component wise. Do 8 times 6 plus negative 1 times 2 plus 4 times 3. We would get 48 minus 2 plus 12. Well, I know 12 plus 48 is 60. So we have 60 minus 2 is 58. That would give us the dot product. And something I actually I learned from my physics class between two vectors and the angle theta between them is acute. 
theta is an acute angle. Then the dot product, A and B, the A dot B is going to be positive. It's a fun little information. Now, if we have um, two vectors, we take the dot product. There's an obtuse angle. A dot B will be less than zero. Now, my question for you is what happens if they are perpendicular vectors? What happens? It's zero. Why? Well, without knowing the magnitude, where it's greater than zero. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you just use like an intermediate value theorem. The, yeah, but um, rigorously, we could look at the definition of the dot product. You know, go back to cosine of theta. Well, what is co theta is ninety degrees right here in this picture. So we have cosine of 90 degrees, you know, disregarding whatever these are. Um, you just make up some number for them. But what is cosine of 90 degrees? It's zero, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is, this is actually a pretty useful way to check to see if two vectors are orthogonal. Uh, that is perpendicular. Uh, so, yeah, two vectors, say two non-zero vectors, I'm just going to say two vectors. Two vectors are orthogonal if and only if um, a dot b is equal to zero. So that's a pretty handy, nifty result we have right there. Um, and there's a lot of other um, consequences or things we can extrapolate from the dot product. Like we can find the angle between two vectors. So let's let's think of some vectors. I'm just going to use the ones that I, I used earlier. We have A equal to I hat plus 2J hat minus 2K hat, and B is equal to 4I minus 3K. So if we want to find the angle between A and B, well, we have the dot product, A dot B, is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cosine theta. We just solve for theta, right? We just solve for that guy. That's what we want. So we have A dot B. Yeah, there you go. Cosine inverse, arc cosine, um, magnitude of A, magnitude of B. And that's equal to theta. OK, so we calculated A dot B earlier up here. And we got 10. So I'm going to roll with that. We have theta is equal to cosine inverse of 10 divided by, well, the magnitude of A is what? We have the square root of 1 plus 4 plus 4, right? Because this is 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, negative 2 squared is 4. So 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. So that's the magnitude of A. And then the magnitude of B.
is the square root of 16 plus 9. That's 25. The square root of 25 is just 5. And then we would just plug this into the calculator. Uh, this cancels. So this is 2 and a 1. So we have cosine inverse of 2 over 3. And my handy scientific calculator. Um, let's see. Cosine inverse of, um, let's make sure we're in radians, right? How do I change the radians in this? Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Well, um, the Simbo Lab. So we have cosine inverse of 2 over 3. We get 48.84 on Desmos. I got 48.19 degrees. Oh, 48.19. Is that radians? Is that... Hmm. Yeah, let's answer in degrees for this. Yeah, I bet you that's radian. Or, huh? Yeah, right. So, yeah, just, just be wary of that. Um, uh, yeah. Now, um, we have the, um, we have, Radians, yeah. Um, scalar projection. Of U onto V. So projection. We write it like U onto V is equal to u dot v over the magnitude of v. OK. So this is the scalar projection of u onto v. Um, and then we also have the vector projection of u onto v. And to get the vector projection of u onto v, all we do is take our scalar projection, because what is a scalar? Can you answer that? What is a, what is a scalar? Just a number. Magnitude. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a scalar is a number. And so um, magnitude is a scalar, that's true. Scalar is not magnitude. Yeah, there you go. So if we're multiplying, um, we would multiply by the unit vector. Because we have a scalar component, right? we're, we're multiplying the scalar by a unit vector, the unit vector in the direction, or a unit vector in the direction of v. And so, you know, writing this, we, we get u dot v. I'm combining the bottoms down here. And so we get divided by the magnitude of v squared times 
V. Now, and, but this is a vector. So the output of the vector projection is a vector, or, uh, kind of obvious, right, in the name. But um, let's go ahead and try a couple examples, or an example. <coughs> so if we have, uh, if we have, uh, let's see, V is equal to negative 7, 2, and 5, and U is equal to um, 8, 3, 2. Then we have, it says calculate scalar and vector projections. So to calculate the scalar projection, let's do an S right here for scale. U on to V. Take the dot product of these two, right? So this is eight times negative seven be negative 56 plus two times three, six, five, 10. So we divide by the magnitude of V, what we're projecting onto. And that would be the square root of 49 plus four plus 25. So this would equal, okay, so this is, uh, well, that's negative 50, and then negative, we got negative 40 divided by, uh, we got, what, 53 plus 25, 8, 78, divided by the square root of 78. Projection right there. And they calculate the vector projection. All we have to do is take this, the scalar projection right here. We would take negative 40 over square root of 78 and multiply it V over the magnitude of V. So we actually get uh, negative 40 over 78 times vector V, which was negative 7, 2, and 5. So this reduces, right? This is uh, 20 and 78 divided by 2, 3, 8, uh, 9. 20 over 39. Right, yeah, because 40 is 80. And then times negative 7, 2, and 5. And then you would just multiply it through. So that would be the vector projection of u onto v. Does that make sense? So just one of the many um, consequences of the dot product. Let's talk about, um, yeah. It's like you're shining a light. It's a shadow left. So if this is a light bulb, um, you on to V. And so like the length of it would be the um, scalar projection. And then when you multiply by in the direction of V, then you get actual the vector. Yeah, that's a good question. 
it's like you're shining a light. Projection, think projection, right? We project a vector onto a vector. Does that make sense? You multiply it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sweet. Um, now uh, we have uh, a few minutes left, so I'm going to talk about the cross product. The cross product. Um, it's a vector output. Now, um, the definition is in terms of a scalar, right? The magnitude of A cross B is equal to A times B times sine of theta. But this is magnitude, right? This is the magnitude of the cross product. So the cross product is actually a vector. Now, um, let's go ahead and calculate some cross product action. So if we have A equals I minus J minus K, and B is equal to 1 half I plus J plus 1 half K. Now the cool thing about the cross product is the output vector A cross B is perpendicular to both A and B. So if we vector A, vector B, well the cross product I guess this would be B cross A is uh, perpendicular to both of them. One thing I should note about the dot product real quick, the dot product is uh, commutative. So that is U dot V is equal to V dot U. However, that's not the case for cross product. With the cross product, a cross B is equal to the negative B cross A. So it's like anti-commutative. If we commute, we have to flip the sign. OK. So we have A and B. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. A is negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. B is 1 half, 1, 1 half. So let's actually get into the meat and potatoes of uh, uh, calculating it. So to, to calculate A cross B, it's a determinant, right, from some linear algebra. We have I, J, K in the first row. And then the second row, we put A, 1, negative 1, negative 1. And then the third row we put B, one or one half, one, one half. And to calculate the determinant, we take I, and then we mark out along the we mark out along here and along here. And we take the smaller determinant, this two by two remaining. We get negative one, negative one, one, one half, and that's from this part right here. We subtract off j and take the determinant of, well, if we were to cross out this part and the top row. And so the numbers remaining after we cross out the middle column and the top row would be 1, negative 1, 1 half, 1 half. It, yep, yep. It just points in the opposite direction. So if this is, I'm bad at the right hand rule, but if this is B cross A, then A cross B would be down here. 
Yeah, because it's just a negative scaling. That's very good. Um, and then we have plus k times, uh, we have these four numbers right here. One, negative one, one half, one half. And so uh, calculating the determinant, a two by two determinant, we have A, B, C, D. This is equal to A, D minus B, C. So we get I hat times A, D minus B, C. That's negative one half minus a negative one, so that's plus one. And then we get minus j times, we get one half minus a negative one half, so that's plus one half. And then we get plus k times one half minus negative one half, that's plus one half. No, there should be a one right here. Yeah, that's a one. So that's one plus one half. Yeah, that's it. So we get a uh, negative half plus one is one half i. And then we get a uh, negative j. And then we get plus three over two k. So this is the vector one half, negative one, three over two. Now, how would we check to see if this vector is actually the cross product? The property of the cross product is it is orthogonal. It's perpendicular to both. It's perpendicular to both A and B. Well, if it's perpendicular to both A and B, that means A dot A cross B is equal to zero. Remember two vectors, yep, that's it. You would have to do it with both of them. No, you're a good man. All right, so uh, so let's do it. We have, we have A equals I minus J minus K, so A, dot a cross b would be uh well we have one negative one negative one dot product one half negative one three over two well we get one component wise multiplication we get one times one half we get negative one times negative one is plus one and we get negative one half times three over two that's a minus three over two so what do we get? We get three over two minus three over two is zero. And then same story, I'll leave you to do the B dot A cross B. So if the cross product, is a vector and A dot B is a scalar, we're going to play uh, a game show. This is a game show real quick to the, the finale. Um, the game show is called Nonsense or Elegant Mathematics. Now, I'm going to write some expressions down here. And you're going to tell me if they're nonsense or if it's elegant mathematics. Keep in mind, all of mathematics is elegant. <laughs> so we have A dot B cross C. What is this? Is this nonsense or elegant mathematics? If it's elegant mathematics, tell me if it's a vector or a scalar. Ah, let's think about it. You said nonsense. But we have B cross C is a vector. And then we're dot prodding it. We're dot producting it with another vector. 
well, that's completely, uh, that's a reasonable thing to do. We take two vectors and we get a scalar output. So this is in fact elegant mathematics. Okay, we have we have a few more. So you you haven't lost your uh, your prize just yet. Uh, we have a cross. Oh no, b. Do, just think, yeah. Let's, let's let's take it. You know, step by step. Let's. We have parentheses in it. So okay, so b cross c. Right, b cross c. The dot product between two vectors is always a scalar. And now think about it. We're taking a vector cross product with a scalar. Nonsense. Okay, part C. We have A cross B cross C. Nonsense or elegant mathematics? Elegant mathematics. Now is or is it scalar? What's the output of a cross product? Well, this would be a vector. And then we're crossing it with another vector. Well, a vector cross product with a vector would have to be, drum roll, it's a vector. All right, let's do three more, uh, D. So we have A dot B dot C. Nonsense or elegant mathematics? This is in fact nonsense. Because we have B dot C, this would give me a scalar, but I can't take a vector dot product with the scalar. This doesn't make sense. That's what this would equate to. So it is nonsense. Um, now we got part E. Now we got uh, A dot B cross C dot D. Nonsense or elegant mathematics? This is nonsense because we have a scalar cross product with a scalar. Scalar cross the scalar. Well, we take cross product with vectors, so this doesn't make sense. This is nonsense. And now part F. We have A cross B dot C cross D. Elegant, what's the output? Scalar or vector? It's a scalar, very good. See, there's there's major improvement in that. Good job. So your prize, is, I didn't actually bring a prize. Um, I'm sorry, I, I can give you some more problems to do. That could be your prize. <laughs> okay, now uh, this is actually the end of this session. Oh, really? Wow. What is it? Wait. Oh, wow. Back minus cab. Very cool. So this is actually the end of this session. And uh, I would like to thank you for showing up. Do invite your friends. And um, unless you have any questions, I'll see you next week. Thank you.